me say welcome to the house of the Lord. We're glad you're here. Uh, what a beautiful day. Isn't it been a beautiful day? Warm. I feel like spring. Early spring. And so we'll take them. Amen. Amen. You love God. I'm still rejoicing over Sunday. Enjoy the service Sunday. And then we had a Sunday afternoon. Anybody listen to the sun service Sunday afternoon? Mark, how was it? Sister Carol, how was it? All right. Amen. I like to hear, besides me saying it was good, let me hear somebody else. <laughs> tell, me, tell me what it was like. Let's stand together as we uh, prepare. Others will be coming in, but we want to start on time. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have Carlo's beautiful sister with us. We love you. Don't know you. I wish we could get to know you. But we love your brother. I love him as a son. And he's a precious man of God and his lovely wife. They're, they're like our kids. And we thank God for them. Amen. But we're glad you're here. How long are you here for? Uh, wow. That, that, is, that is short. All right. But uh, take advantage of the good time and enjoy each other while you're here. That's beautiful. Amen. Lift your hand with me, Heavenly Father. We honor you today. We adore you today. We lift you up. We worship and bless you. We magnify and glorify you. What a privilege, what a joy, what an honor to be in your presence. I was glad when they said unto me, let us now go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand in the holy place. Father, we come with hungry hearts. We come with thirsty souls. We come yearning and longing for your love and your kisses and the warmth and breeze of the Father's heart. You're such a good God. You're good all the time, all the time. You're good. I've never seen where you're not good to your children. And I thank you for the good Holy Ghost. I thank you for the presence of Jesus. I thank you for this another week you've given us. I thank you for the anointing and what has been accomplished this past Sunday. And the move of God, and even on online with the, uh, with the afternoon service. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you for the work that you're doing, Lord. Take the messages and let it be used for the building up of your kingdom, for the manifestation of the glory of God. Touch hearts and touch lives, Father. Touch everyone that put an effort to be here today, credited to their spiritual bank account. Uh, Oh God, we love you today. We lift up holy hands, holy hearts, uh, a holy faith, a holy love, a holy life to a holy God. We bow at your feet. We bow at your throne. We bow to your kingdom, your government, your leadership, your rule within our hearts, within our lives. Be glorified in us. Be Be lifted up. Be edified, be praised, be magnified. Father, we come to hear your word. We've come to love on you. We've come to lift you high. For you said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Father, bless every family, every individual, every home represented here. Fill the temple with your glory. Let the fresh oil be poured out. Let the fresh fire burn within our hearts. Let the word of God go forth with wisdom and rhema, revelation, insight, foresight, that we might be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length, the width and the height and the full reveal panoramic scope of the revelatory word of God, that we may know you in a more perfect way, Father, that we might be filled with all of the fullness of God, giving you all the glory, all the honor, all the worship, and all the praise in the mighty, holy, glorious, wonderful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus, we love you. Tell him, say, Jesus, I want you to know tonight that I love you. Lord Jesus, I want you to know tonight how much I appreciate you. How grateful I am for you and your love toward me and your kindness, and your favor, and your provision, and your love in my life. I'm so thankful, and I'm grateful, and I love you back. I kiss you with my heart, with my worship, with my spirit. I 
kiss you, my soul kisses you. Like Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit doth rejoice in God, my Savior. What a God. Huh. Anybody feel his presence here? He's in the house. Lord, we want you to know we recognize you're in the house. You have come in to love and to minister and to touch the hearts of the body of Christ. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Turn with me for opening scripture to the book of Psalms, if you will. The book of Psalms. Psalms 34, the 34th Psalm. This is a Psalm of encouragement of seeking the Lord. How many of you love, how many of you love to seek the Lord? The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Seek the Lord early while you're still in your youth. Seek the Lord, Psalm 34. David said, this is a psalm of David. Not all of them are of David. And he, pre he pretended madness before Amalek, but drove him away. Look at, look at uh, Psalm 34. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. If you're going to boast, boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify. Magnify means to exalt. Oh, and to lift up. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. David said, I sought the Lord and he heard me. How many of you believe God hears us when we seek him and when we call on him? And David said, and delivered me. He delivered me from all my fears. No fear. Don't walk in fear. Don't live in fear. Even with this virus. No, don't, don't do that. They looked to him and were radiant. And the faces was not ashamed. When you look to God, you'll find your spirit radiant. And you'll find your face enlightened and not ashamed. David said, this poor man cried out. We're always poor. Poor in spirit. Bless are the poor in spirit. Come on. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Never think yourself any more than what David just said. I'm just a poor man. I'm nothing. I'm dust without Christ. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him. How many of you glad you're saved? Saved him out of all his troubles. How many of you been there? But if you had some troubles and you run to God and you called on him and he delivered you and he saved you out of your troubles, out of your struggles. The angel of the Lord, and we're talking about angels, Sister Carol. The angels, and this is Psalm Old Testament. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear and delivers them. That's, that's one of the uh, confirming New Testament. They're ministering spirits sent from, from God to minister to us who are heirs of salvation. They have no other work but for us to help us. And here you have it there. The angel of the Lord what? Encamps all around those who fear and love him and what? Delivers them, in other words, from the wicked one, from the hand of the enemy. Okay? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good when you taste. We're talking about the word of God. Who tastes and say, also relationship. Bless is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord. You, his saints. There is no want for those who fear him. Always live in that, in that realm of respect and humility. And say reverent fear. Because he's your father. You fear him out of love. Reverend fear means reverent respect in, 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 in the original Greek and Hebrew here. So you reverend God, you respect him, and you give him that reverent fear, that awe, because that's your heavenly father. Don't we do that to parents? You should. That's God's word. Come on, honor your parents. Come on. 
Amen. All right. That's why God, uh, God, uh, God placed a high premium on parents to children. God says to the children, you don't honor your parents. I'm going to cut your life short. That's no joke. I'll cut your life short. Honor your father and mother that your days may be lengthened. Come on. Amen. That's why God, God placed a high premium on parents. They brought you. Without them, you wouldn't be here. Amen. For the body. Say the body. Amen. All right. Let's move on. Blessed the man who trusts in him. O fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no want to those who fear him. The young lion lack and, lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, the invitation to the children of God. Come, listen to me, God says. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. See, the respect, the reverent fear of the Lord. And you learn that. See, that's learned. I always respected uh, my mom. I didn't always agree with her. But I never argued with her. I never debated her. Uh, when I see, uh, even in my adult, uh, instead of having a debate, I just, you know, change the subject and walk away. But you don't get in a debate, in an argument with your parents. That's not respect because you're not on their level. You're the child. They're the parents. They'll always be the parent. You only have one. Come on. Only have one parent or two parents. Honor them while they're here. God will honor you. Say, honor them. God will honor you. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, are you... Uh, I just, I just did that. I just, uh, God, I just had that in me to do that. Now, God, sisters and brothers, oh my God, they, uh, the stuff they do, one of God them don't send them instantly, instantly to hell. And and the cussing and the swearing and the argument, the debating and the rivalry and her uh, against their mother. You see, and yeah, yeah, my mama when she. Before she left, I went back home to the Bahamas. I'm from the Bahamas. And uh, I used to go home every so often. But every time I go home, I just spend that time with her because that's my purpose of going home. Not to run the roads and see friends, to see her. And uh, I knew that I would not see her again. She knew that I would not see her again. And she knew that she would not see me again, but we never spoke it. And... Uh, See, she said, uh, son, would you let uh, mommy, call, we call, uh, she call, I used to call her mommy. Some said mother, we used to call her mommy. That's our name for her mom, mommy. And uh, uh, she said, uh, son, would you let mommy pray for you before you go back to the States? I feel I need to pray for you and ask God's hand on your life. And one thing she said, she said, of all my of all the nine children, you're you're the only one that didn't cause mommy pain. You didn't put pain in my heart, and uh, I'll never forget that what she said. All right, picking up, continue where we left off. Come, ye children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desire life and love many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil, your lips from speaking guile depart from evil do good seek peace and pursue it the eyes of the lord are in the righteous and his ears are open unto the cry the face of the lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth the righteous cry out and the lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles i've been there i'm still there the lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Contrite means a crushed spirit. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. I want you to hear that. Out of them all. He guards all, speaking of Christ, he guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Don't hate God's people. Uh, that another condemns men also to be held guilty. 
The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. None of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Somebody say praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the word. Blessed Lord, Lord, I love you tonight. Father, bless the word. Thank you for your spirit, for your witness, for your presence, for the power and the love and the grace of God in this house today. Father, I pray that the worship ascended before you. It became a sweet perfume in the very presence of the King of glory and the Lord of hosts. Oh, Father, we bless you today. We exalt you today. We honor you today. We worship you today. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes, amen. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Father, rest down upon me. Say it, Lord. Rest down upon me. Upon this earthen vessel. Fill me with yourself with your glory, with your power, with your spirit, with your word. Fill me that I might be filled with all of the fullness of God and of Christ till Christ be formed in me the hope of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be saved. Hallelujah. Let me say we're glad you're here. And... Uh, I've got to have Carlos, lovely sister, visiting for a day. Wow, I just came back from my son visiting with him for two weeks. And that was good. Enjoyed that. Uh, that was good. Amen. That's the best I've been treated in a long time. <laughs> I think he got saved. <laughs> Well, not a wonderful service Sunday. Thank God for his presence. Let me say we welcome you. We're glad you're here. Amen, amen, amen. I got uh, Brother Carlos. I've got, uh, I had uh, some folks to let me know that they are really enjoying the live the stream and uh, the messages. And so, uh, to God be the, I said, is there anything you need to be, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's all right. Amen. All right. We're going to do the Lord in prayer. I want us to. Uh, uh, I had one of my parishioners that I uh, watched grow up from a beautiful family. Called her name was Dawn Colbo. She's 52 years old. She got killed today. She's the mother of two kids, and but she. Uh, I passed it. Her parents, she was growing up. That's when she was single, coming up with a young girl, watch her grow up, and uh, then got married. And, but uh, you couldn't ask for a more beautiful, Christ-like child of God than, than Dawn Cole. With always a big smile and love God and never bashful, never afraid, and never ashamed of her testimony, her weakness, and her Lord. And she went home today. And, uh, you know, we celebrate her. We don't mourn her. We celebrate her. Now, we'll miss her. Those who are close to her and love her will miss her in bodily form. But she is with Jesus. She's better off than we're here. That's what the Bible tells the Bible, The Word tells you that. And God doesn't lie. God said, you're better off. Come on. Amen. Yes. Because we, we got to go. We got to go through this earth. The 
Bible said when we leave, we rest from our labors and our works do follow us. So it's a whole different state in, in heaven. There's no, you know, working and laboring and worrying about paying bills and getting to work and raising a family and taking care of a husband and, and whatever you do in this earthly life. That's, that's finished. That's stopped. That's all. Uh, now the Bible doesn't go into details what you'll be doing until Jesus comes to take you out of paradise. You ever thought, what the, what are these people doing? All these, all these millennials, you know, come on. You know, what are they doing? But that's not, that's not told. And don't believe all these books that you read. They write them to, to sell money because it's big business. Yes, all them are lies, lies. If God wanted to know, he'd put it in the word of God. And, oh, the, the apostle Paul, he was taken up into paradise. And God told him, I don't want you to write anything. I don't want you to say anything. I don't want you to reveal anything. So if God wanted it in scripture, he would have given it to the apostle Paul. Come on, talk to me here. He would have given it to him that he could give to us. So what better witness than to have a man of God who is credible in the scriptures than to bring forth insight into the eternity. But God said, no, that's not to be told. And so I don't read books. I don't buy them. I don't believe them. I don't believe in them. And I advise you not to either. Amen. God gives us enough in the word. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Heaven is a real place. Paradise is a real place. Where, you know, paradise is, and we call it heaven, but it's in paradise. Heaven is a planet, the biggest planet above all the cosmos and the solar system. Where the Bible said God steps on the balcony of heaven and he looks down on the cosmos above the, the all the trillions of stars and planets and his creation. And heaven is the third celestial realm. Somebody say amen. There's only two or three realms. The earthly realms. The heavenly realm. I mean the earthly realms. The earthly realm. Gravity. Uh, the the, the uh, heavenly realm, which is called space. And then the eternal realm, which is what? Glory. Say it. Glory. See, that's glory. Space means weightlessness, just uh, space, weightlessness, and then gravity. So the second heaven is no, no gravity, and uh, uh, there's no, there's no weight. There's no everything is like a feather. You can have uh, a million tons of steel in space, and it'll float like a feather. Wow. Do you know most of the elements in the heavenly are a certain kind of metal. Or you, you know, all the meteorite is metal. It's not dust. It's not it's rock. It's metal. That's why if you find a meteorite, it's uh, you you find you find yourself a chunk of money. Sometime sometime three hundred thousand dollars, you find a meteorite because they're rare and they're from space and it's metal and uh, they're very. Everybody wants to get a hold of them because it's a certain metal from space. And so uh, people have buy all these things to go out through everywhere and try to find out where it's fell. You know, dig it up, you know. All right, the people that do that for a living, do that for life. All right. So space is a whole other world. Amen and a wonderful hallelujah. All right. We go into the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for the body of Christ. Pray for pastor. Pray for... Uh, 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 Sister Pam, pray for Sister Larry, pray for uh, the shut-ins and those who are not able to be with us. Amen. Pray for a harvest field, Charles County. Pray for souls. Pray for the harvest. Pray for your families. You have loved ones that are lost. Pray, but not only pray for them, tell them Jesus is coming. And they need to get ready, prepare, give their life to Christ. Otherwise, they're going to miss him. They're going to miss him. So while while you have opportunity and they're still here, you're still here, tell them about Jesus. Amen. And every opportunity, be a witness. Be a witness. 
and make every day count. I want to say amen, because as it's adding to your salvation. Amen. All right. Pray for this ministry. Pray for the church. Pray for the body of Christ as a whole. Pray for the true, the true five-fold leadership ministry, pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, uh, apostles. Pray for them that they will uh, wake up and start to uh, fulfill their role as the body of Christ to bring the church into perfection and excellence, into the wholeness, into Christ, into Christ, into Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. What are there's a need quickly? Anybody with a need? All right. Amen. Pray that God give. Are you driving or flying? Driving. Pray that God give you traveling mercies tomorrow or whenever you leave. I'll put angels round about that car or wherever you're driving and give you a safe, safe journey back home. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Once again, thank you for your word. Father, we love to worship you. We love to praise you. But Lord, we've come to hear what you have to say to us tonight in your word. Let your word speak to us and minister grace to the hearers. Have your way in all that you desire to accomplish and to bring forth for your kingdom, for your glory, your namesake, and your praise. In Jesus' name, and the body of Christ said, Amen. 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 I got a great teaching, a great word, an end time word. Send me an end time word. And I'm going to talk about the events preceding the day of the Lord that prevents preceding the coming of Christ. I want to talk to you today about strong delusions. Strong delusions. Mm, mm, mm. Strong delusions. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, let's look at verse 1 through 12, setting the foundation for this great message. The Bible said in the last days, God's going to send strong delusions upon the people who rejected the truth who refuse to walk in the truth, who know the truth, but refuse to walk in the truth. The Bible says Satan knows the word. He knows the word, but he, he doesn't walk in the word. Well, Satan knows the word, but he doesn't walk in the word. You got a lot of religious people who know the word, but they don't walk in the word. These are those where Jesus was to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. These are religious people who know the word, but don't know him. How many of you believe you could know the word and not know him? Yes. I think of Charleston Heston, you know, the man that created that, made the movie, The Ten Commandments, the, you know. And uh, he made a lot of biblical documentary. In, that, in, in, other words, in other words, he went through the Middle East and Turkey, all through the Middle East, and he documented scripture, living scripture. He, he lived the scripture by going to the places of, of scripture and, and, and sharing the word of God. Yet he died lost. Yeah, he died lost. He was an atheist. Yeah, he was an open, professed atheist. But he knew the word. He 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 made a lot of Christians movie, and 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 uh, I've got a lot of his documentary, and they're good. What he did because he was a professional actor, and and they went through the Middle East and they document call it the Living Bible in color in movie though, where you go from place and where Christ walked and where this miracle happened, and that miracle happened, where Paul went, and all through the New Testament in film. And and he he he, uh, he he did an awesome job and made a lot of money selling that. I've got I've got uh, some sets in the library there. And but he died lost. He was a professed open atheist. He, he said, "How can you do that and not know Christ?" Well, 
The Bible said, how can that happen? Here with the word says, Satan, say Satan, the God of this world, have blinded the minds of many. Least the light of the glorious gospel, which is the image of Christ, should shine forth unto them. Now that happens when Christ, the word of truth, comes to you and you reject truth. When you reject truth and you reject Christ and you reject light for Christ is what? The word, you reject the word, you reject Christ, you reject light. And you rather walk in the darkness, men love darkness rather than light. And you reject the word of God, you reject truth. Then there's nothing left for you that God can give you. The Bible said if we neglect so great salvation, wherewith shall we be saved? God has nothing else to give you. And so the Bible tells us Satan, he's a hard taskmaster. He will make you believe the lie because there's nothing left but the lie. In this earthen realm, all you have is truth and the lie. Jesus Christ is the personified truth of God. Satan is the lie and the father of lies. And so when we reject truth, then Satan will make you believe the lie and be condemned. And be damned, that's what the word says. And be condemned and uh, and so we have you isn't it amazing you have professional people who are doctors and lawyers very educated very smart but yet they're blinded to the simplicity of the gospel they're in cults and false religion and dark religion and demonic religion and different sects and sects and groups and but not into Christ, not into Christianity, not in the Word of God. He said, how can that happen? To where is your mind? Well, the Bible tells you, Satan blind their minds. You got surgeons who, who open up your chest and, and give you heart surgery, but yet they'll die lost and perish without Christ, without hope. You got scientists and of all the professions of the earthly realm, they'll die lost without Christ because their minds have been blinded because God came to them one time or might be in a few times. However, God uh, cho chose to. That's up to him. And they rejected him. They say, no, no. And they rejected him. And so God uh, never came back. And so now they're open to Instead of having received the spirit of Christ, now they open to a demonic spirit. And that's what they will receive. Amen. All right. Remember Jesus says to, to us in the last days to Israel. said, I came in my father's name. Speaking to the Jews, he said, I, Jesus, I came in my father's name to you and you rejected me. Speaking of the Antichrist that come, Jesus said, there will come one in his own name and you will receive him. Well, we see that happening today when many are, are accepting that the spirit of Antichrist, Paul said, is already here. So the spirit of Antichrist was in the day of Paul. Can, can you imagine where the spirit of Antichrist is today in this earth? How many of you believe the darkness is, in creep, is encroaching upon the earth? Every day, I say it. The light is getting dim and the darkness is getting darker. All right, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Let's read it. Paul said, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, rapture, resurrection, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble. How many of you, able, how many of you believe a lot of people has been shaken last year and this year with this coronavirus and all what's going on, even, even in politics and even what's going on in this nation, but across the world, not just in America, it's across the world. People are being shaken and troubled. I'm not troubled, I'm not shaken, but the world is. They're shaken and they're troubled. Paul said, be not shaken, he says to the church, be not so shaken in, uh, uh, or be troubled by spirit, by spirit. 
all by word, all by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. It was so bad in Paul's day. They thought Jesus had already come. Jesus had not come. So Paul is correcting the record. He said that Christ had not come. Look what he said. Christ had not come. But many believed that Christ had already come. I mean, if you if you if you, if you think you think it's bad, honey, think about Nero feeding the Christians to the lions. Think about Nero going in your house, breaking the door down, and and putting a chain on your a collar on your neck and a chain on you and pulling you out of your bed. That's what he did. And use you for sport in the arenas. If you can fight as a, as a uh, gladiator to bring entertainment, then there you become fun to the bears and to the lions and to the wild beasts that they brought up on the arena and you fight for your life. Now the Christians' writings write that the Christians never fought. They just stood there and they worship, and they were just killed. Because their life, you know, was already, uh, they put no value on this earthly life. So Paul says, he said, look at verse 3. He said, let no one deceive you by any means. I want you to look at that word deceive. A key word here in the kingdom of Satan is deception. All you find that word all through. The word, especially the New Testament, deception, deceived. Let no man deceive you. Deception, deception. Because that's the greatest tool of Satan. He doesn't have to convince you. He just has to deceive you. The Bible said Eve was deceived. And uh, when she was deceived, then she gave to her husband instead of her husband knowing better. And really fulfilling the role as the protector and the covering of his wife. And say, honey, no, we're not going to eat that. God told us not to eat that. Uh, and begin to, not, not like, you know, he, he, it was on his, it was his responsibility. And he reneged on it. That's why when uh, God came in the cool in the day, uh, he called Adam on the carpet. He didn't call Eve. I'm going to deal with her later, he said, but... Uh, she's not going to get off. Judgment's going to fall on her. But I'm going to deal with the man. Because he's accountable for her. She, he is her covering. He is her spiritual shepherd. And her pastor. Talk to me here. Hallelujah. If you are, if you married and have a family, every man in that family that has a family and you say you are a child of God. You are the pastor and the shepherd of that home. Now if you could pastor and shepherd your home. You'll fit in the church pretty good. Somebody say amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you'll understand the shepherd up here. Because now you understand your responsibility as a shepherd. So you feel. You've got that feeling. And that knowing, and that compassion of knowing. Amen? All right, let's move on. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless, what? The falling away comes first. And the man of sin, who's the man of sin? The Antichrist. He is called what? He's revealed as what? The son of perdition or the son of Satan. This son of perdition, this son of Satan, the Bible said, who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That will happen in the in the first three and a half years of the millennial reign when the Jews build their temple 
and uh, he will uh, slaughter the hog, the swine on the temple, and uh, their eyes will be open, and he will take away the worship from the Jews, and that's when he will set up himself in the temple as God, to be worshipped as God. Jesus said, do you not remember, look at verse 5, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things would happen? And now you know what is restraining that he, the Antichrist, may be revealed in his own time. So the Antichrist is being restrained. Who is restraining the Antichrist? The church. We are the restraining. Remember, we're the salt. We're the light. We're the restraining. The Holy Spirit is with us. But it's the church that will be taken out of the way. Hear what Pope John, uh, what's the president's name? Pope, name? Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Hear what he says. He said if it wasn't for these so-called evangelicals, he said the world, the global world church could come together. But it's these evangelicals who is, oh, what did he say? He said, he, said uh, he calls us dangerous. And he says, you are worthy of death. That came out of his own mouth. So uh, the spirit filled, the true believers, he calls us dangerous. He said, you're worthy of death. Oh, yeah. That's why when the true church is gone, guess what? They're going to kill what's left. Yeah. Remember the beheading. That's coming. You don't want to be here. All right? Death will be because the global church now will be what? In control. All right? By Satan himself. By the, by the Antichrist and the false prophet, which will be... The Pope, the reigning Pope. If it's not him, it's the one that will follow him, but I think it's him. Remember, they're in there for life. I could be wrong. If it's not him, it's the next one that's coming. But according to what all, all the history and everything, he's supposed to be the one. And I see him evolving. I see him came, he came in as a lamb, but I see him every year, he's getting worse. You should see the blasphemy he said, he, he, he called Jesus Christ a failure. He, he called the cross a crutch. He called Christians weak. He, uh, Google him. Google his name. And that's only some of the nice things he said. Okay. So he's evolving. And he's getting very... I mean, I mean, he don't, he don't care about God. He's in God's face. He's like, he blasphemes God. And uh, uh, well, we, 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 we can look at some of the things that will happen here. Look at verse six. And now you know that what is restraining him that he may be revealed in his own time. For the men, so when when the rapture takes place. And God resurrect the righteous saints and the rapture saints go home to be with the Lord. Then there will be no more church on this earth. And the Bible said the time of the church will cease. The time of the dispensation of grace will cease. The time of the Gentile era will come to a close. Come to a close. Look at verse 7. Now the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Now that was during Paul's day. Now we've never seen such lawlessness. It's not just in America, it's all over. You ain't seen none that buckle up, honey. It's coming. Look at the new government. God help us all. That's nothing to play with. Now they got control of all the government. No, 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 no road stops. 
And these people don't like God and don't like the church and don't like God's people. They'll openly tell you that. I'll go after you. They're already telling us we need we need to de deprogram you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what China does. That's what Russia does. Put you in camp and deprogram you. And they're already telling us that we need to deprogram you. Seventy million people need deprogram. Because <laughs> we, we're we local to make decisions like we did. We're looney to them. We don't have any sense. They got all the sense. Welcome to the last days. All right, look at verse 8. For the, look at the verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's the man child, the true church. And then, say, say, the man child is what? Say, the Christ. The Christ is the true body of Christ. They're, they're called the Christ. So we're called, not just church, that's one name. Another name for us is the Christ. Jesus is Christ. We are the Christ. We're after him formed in his image. We are the Christ. We are the true Christ. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Remember, tell Christ be, come on, formed in you. The hope of glory. So we are the, the collective body of Christ. It's called the Christ. So when you hear that, understand what that means. The Christ. That's the true bride, the true church. And then you got Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he's never, Jesus is never called the Christ. He's, he is Christ. Jesus. Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. The Lord. But never the Christ. We're called the Christ. All right. Look at verse 8. Then the lawless, then the lawless one, Satan, which is the Antichrist, then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will what? Consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now that will happen. The Antichrist will be destroyed and the false prophet. When Jesus comes back, where's my picture with him on the horse by the door there? And when we come back with him riding on the horse, he will destroy the Antichrist and the false prophet with just his appearing, with the brightness of his coming and the word of his mouth. So he will cast them alive into the lake of fire. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of Revelations. So uh, then remember, and remember what Satan will be bound. Remember the angel coming with the great train, with the great chain. And binding him and putting him in the pit and putting a seal upon him, upon the pit, for a thousand years. So during the thousand year millennial kingdom, we will not have no antichrist, no false prophet, no demon, no devils. All of them will be in the pit. I want you to hear that. All demons, all devils will be in the pit. Will be correction, will be in the lake of fire. Okay, so remember, there will be no evil spirit on the earth in the kingdom to come. Wow, we never had that. I don't even know what that'll be. What that'll be like? Come on. Remember, it is the demons that that kill that bring along all this wickedness and all only all, come through demon demon activity. Remember, the thief coming not before what to kill, to steal, to destroy. Well, that's his kingdom. You're not going to have that. Nothing will kill or destroy in my holy mountain. We just talked about that Sunday. Do we forget what we just heard? It'll be a kingdom of peace. No war, no killing, long life, no death. Rare. Rare. God said if a, if a man dies at a hundred He'll be mourned as if a child died and he'll only die because he's in rebellion to God in sin. 
Wow. And he lived a hundred. And he was born as a child. But you're supposed to live a thousand years into the eternal kingdom. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Let's move on. I'm just reading scripture here now without even getting into the teaching. Uh, look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one, which is the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan. I want you to hear that. So the coming of the Antichrist and the false prophet, they're what? They're, 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 the coming of the lawless one is according to what? The working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonder. So the Antichrist will have power to what? To bring about signs and wonders and lying wonder signs. Uh, let's look at that. Hallelujah. All power with signs and lying wonders. Verse 10. And with all unrighteousness, he will be what? With all unrighteousness, get that word again, deception. We keep, You're going to keep hearing that. Deception, that's his number one tool to deceive the world, to deceive even to church. The spirit of Antichrist is here that is deceiving the body of Christ, those who will allow that. So all with unrighteous deception among those who perish. Why do they perish? Look what the word says. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Not that they don't know the truth. Not that they have not heard the truth. They have no love for the truth. How many of you love the word? How many of you love Christ? Christ is the word. The word is Christ. How many of you love truth? How many of you love light rather than darkness? So they have no love for it. See, everything is of the spiritual must be of love. Say love. Get to know that. Love. Say love. Love. God is love. Come on. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love the kingdom. The law of the kingdom will be love. Love. So God does not compel you or force you, not like the devil. He compel you, he force you to eat the dust. Because he's the hard task master. He take no captives. He's, he'll kill you as quick as he look at you. He'll destroy you. He has no favorites. I'm going to tell you, he take no captives. He'll use you when he finish using you. He'll kill you. He'll destroy you. And I've seen that done over and over and over through many in this earth and life. He's the thief. He's the, he's the killer. He's the destroyer. Jesus said, I've come that you might live. That you might have life. That you might have life more abundantly. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? My God. Who wouldn't want to serve Jesus? Yet people do not serve him. Why? Because they're blinded. They've reached. Truth came to them. Let me pause and say something to you. There's not a man or woman that ever will come from the womb of a woman. And be born in this earthly realm. That God had not dealt with. That God through the Holy Spirit had not come and dealt with and moved upon and wrestled like with Jacob and, 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 and spoke the word to them and dealt with them. And they said, no, 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 no. How do you know that? Look at scripture. Titus chapter 2, 12. 13, 14, 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men teaching them to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that they should live righteously godly, soberly, righteously godly in this present world looking to the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ who shall change these old vile bodies that it may be fashion unto his glorious body. I want to tell you, they lays out in the word so they will never say, God, you didn't tell me. God said, I told you. That's why he says to man, you are inexcusable. There's no excuse for you. 
You don't have to go to church to get saved. You don't have to hear a preacher to get saved. God has already come to you. And God will come to you and deal with you and wrestle with you. God came to me when I was a little boy. Nobody in my house was safe. I lived with people smoke and drank and cuss and raise hell all day. And throw stuff. That was life. Duck. Go hide. Get under the bed. I'm see you we laugh at that, but that was real. But God put his hand on my life. I didn't understand it. Just a little boy. He protected me. From all, all that was going on around me. And I'm wonderful. He guarded, protected me, shielded me. Also from the demonic world. Because you know, you know, uh, in uh, back in in the Bahamas and other countries in the Caribbean, they got a lot of a lot of witchcraft, a lot of demonic, a lot of evil. And I'm telling you, it's real. A lot of people go to them. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Let's move on. Look at verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deceptions among those who perish. Why? Because they did not have or they did not receive the love for the truth that they might be saved. Look at verse 11. And because they reject it, they have no love. What is God going to do? And for this reason... God will send them strong delusions that they should believe, look at it, the lie. You know why? Because they didn't love the truth. They knew it. They sat in, you got people sitting here, uh, I mean, sitting in churches who hear the church, who hear the truth, but they don't live it. It'll be in their life. It'll be in their weakness. It'll be in their walk. It'll be in their testimony. It'll be in their love for the things of God. I'm not talking about, well, you know, I go to church. Well, I did my duty. Fully on your duty. It's never a duty with God. It's a love. Say it. It's a love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. It's never a duty. God said, I'll send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie because they had no love for the truth to receive it, to walk in it. The Bible says Satan also knows the truth. Do you know Satan knows the truth? Do you know Satan also knows the word? He quote the word to Christ. But he doesn't live it. He doesn't walk in it. He doesn't believe in it. Otherwise he wouldn't be Satan. He wouldn't be the devil. Remember that um, the demonic world have nothing to do with Jesus of Nazareth. Even though they know he is the son of the most high God. Anybody read that over in scripture? What have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of the most high God? The demons even know him, but they wouldn't have nothing to do with him. You got people who come to church with a religious spirit. They love to be in the company of the saints. They love the worship. They love all what goes on in a true Pentecostal church, but they wouldn't touch him with a ten foot pole. Like Look at verse 12. The Bible said they, for this reason God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned 
who did not believe the truth. They knew it. They had no love for it. Where was their love? Look at it. They had their love. Their pleasure was what? In unrighteousness. Say in unrighteousness. Righteousness with God is basic with Christ. God said if you don't right, if you don't if you don't live righteous, you're not even saved. That's Bible. Righteousness is elementary to the believer. Say with me. Look at the three tests. Say with me. Righteousness. Godliness. This is where God now begins to separate you. He separates the godly for himself. Holiness. That's where you want to be. Come on. Say I want to be here. Be thou holy for I the Lord thy God. I'm holy. And without holiness within your life. No man shall see God. I'm going to believe God says what he means. It means what he says. You better love holiness. Otherwise you don't love God. Because God is holy. And holiness is God's nature. Say God's nature. And it is God who imparts his holiness in us. We're never holy within ourselves. We, come, we become holy by the Christ in you. Say the Christ in you. Okay. Anybody learning anything? All right. Let's let's hold that and let's get into the message if we can. Otherwise, pick it up and again next week. We're talking about strong delusions. The scripture says, For we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him that you not be still shaken in mind or trouble neither by spirit or by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. How many of you believe it's at hand? Let no man, verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. How many of you believe we're living in the last days? How many of you believe the man of sin, the son of perdition, is about to be revealed? I believe he's here on this earth. I believe he's alive. I believe he's in government. I believe he he he's he's uh, 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 he knows what's going on. I believe that. Now, the text in which we read together, the Holy Spirit set forth us, set before us Satan's program. Satan has a program in the last days. And he has a program for the ages. The Bible tells us uh, that the devil is the great deceiver, the great deceptor. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth, that word again, deceiving, deceiving, deceiving the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now his angels has become what? Demon spirits. And they form the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan. Jesus said, the Lord has taken you out of the kingdom of darkness and translated you in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of his dear son, hallelujah, from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Christ and of God. Somebody say praise God. Hallelujah. The scriptures tells us also that Satan will cause a great falling away just before the coming of Jesus Christ and the rapture of his church from this earth. How many of you believe that? Well, I don't believe that, but the Bible tells us so. The scripture said, know this, that will happen is called the time of apostasy. Apostasy, the falling away. Verse 7 tells us that the mystery of iniquity does already work. Remember, God is the God of what? Iniquity. And iniquity is what? That bent, crooked nature of humanity. 
And so people that will fall away from the faith, which is the word of God, are these people who really never accepted the truth. They knew it. They talked about it. Some preach it. Some teach it. But they didn't believe it. Now God said, it's time to shake up or shake out. Says God, shake it out. Shake it out. Now those, those people who lie and deceive, who proclaim but didn't possess it, they can't do that no more. God said, no more. God said there will be a shaking in the last days and only that will remain will remain. You'd be surprised the preachers who coming out. I got to come out. Ah, I got to come out. He's homosexual. He got to come out. He, he, he is, he is a, a belonging to some tough demon group. Some devil group. Some some secret order. I gotta come out. I'm a mason. They worship devils. They worship me. I gotta come out. They can't come no more. God is so God is getting the church ready. God is exposing judgment. Come on. Judgment must begin at the house of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. And the true church will shake out. Why, you know, what happened to sister so-and-so? What happened to brother? What happened? God said they were never with you. Had they been with you, they would be with they would have been with you. But they were pretending to be like you and with you, but they were not of you. That's Bible. Oh, shut Oh! You have it here too, in every church. Small and big. <laughs> My son, he said, Daddy, I lost 1,600 people. And people I never thought in a million years to walk away, they're gone. It's like I'm sound all over again. We have it in the big church. Have it here. Have it here. <laughs> I have one right here. Wrote me a letter. He even, couldn't even come to my face and talk to me. Write a letter. Open the door and put it on the chair. I come to church on Tuesday and I find a letter. I coming back I'm going to the next church. Mind you pour in their life. You do, you do, you do, you do, you do. They even have their God given respect to put the lead in your hand. They got to stick it in the chair. Welcome to Christians. Come on, talk to me here. I'm talking about reality. This is a present day word. We're living this. This is where the church is now. I have a preacher talking about, you know, I want a present word. This is the present word. Now you might not like it, but this is the present word for the church now. Hear what God says. The Bible talks about the mystery of iniquity does already work. Satan is what? The God of iniquity. Say it. The God of the, another name for him is he's called the God of iniquity. That bent crooked nature of Satan. And if anybody ever ever anybody ever son ever anybody ever seen the serpent walk? God walk. He's a straight and now away. He drops the plumb line. He said, come up hither. Straight. Straight is the gate. Come on. Now is the way. 
a deep good life everlasting. Few there be that find it. The remnant out of every generation. These are people that love not their lives to the death. They don't hold on to this. You fight for this, you lose it. I don't fight to protect this. And God wanted today, He can have it. I go home. You say, God, you say, Pastor, you're reckless. No, I'm full of faith. Let me say that again. I'm not reckless. I'm full of faith. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk in fear. Fear is torment. Fear is a spirit. A dark, evil spirit that brings you into bondage and torment. That's the word. And let's look at the falling away. This falling away is to come in the world of the so-called Christian church. Not the world. Say, not the world. Not, not the religious church either. Because they're packing them in with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. And <laughs> I'm serious. Not the world. What about them big churches? They're packing them in with all kind of gimmicks and all kind of junk. Deception. Go to the door. Mickey Mouse greets you at the door. Welcome. <laughs> Donald Duck in the corner and 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 and, and, them, and them two witches who 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 the movie they just took out with, with the ice and the snowflake and all and the, and. The, Frozen, that meant to, yeah, all of, yeah, they got frozen in the church. And I'm serious. I'm serious. And you take picture after the Sunday morning with frozen, and, and they got they got the 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 the, uh, the what do you call the the snow the snow toy? Ola, Ola. And then, and then other churches have Star Wars. All oh, their demon toys. They give out demon toys. Some churches got Mickey Mouse. Some people got Star Wars. Some people got all kind of to be like the world. Bring the world in the church. And they don't preach Christ. You don't hear about Christ. He's never mentioned. It's all about you. And we suck that up like a vacuum cleaner. Now, gotta come back for more. And they'll pack the church in by the thousands. But the true church, they don't even want to come to church. That's why it's the remnant. Look at this. Talk to me here. Look at it. It's not just that, but every true church is the remnant. in him. Say him. He's the focus. Say he's the head. Say he's the substance. He is it. And without him you have nothing. Nothing. It's empty. It's a facade. It's a religious activity. God said you have a form of godliness but no power. Wow, my time goes. I got five after nine. And I'm, I'm just on page one. <laughs> I got five after nine. Where does time go? Let me close with just quoting the scripture to you. First Timothy. Chapter 4, 1 through 3rd verse. Read it. Open up the Bible. Look at it. This falling away is to come in the world of the Christian church. Look at it. 
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. That word expressly means forcefully, dynamically, with power. Say, hear ye, hear ye what God is saying. That's what, that's what expressly means. That in the latter day, in the last days, in the last times, some shall depart from the faith. You got a Bible? Raise it up. Say the faith. This is the faith. That's what's once delivered to the great church of God. This is the faith that gives you, say with me, look at me. This is the faith that gives you faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of faith, which is the word of God. Faith is the substance. How many of you believe this is substance? The substance of things that you hope for. We as the church live in hope. Paul calls it the living hope, the blessed hope, the eternal hope. This is hope, the promises of hope. My faith is in this. I hope my hope is in this. The Bible said, Tempt shall depart from the faith, giving heed, giving heed, in other words, giving into, relent, opening up, receiving, seducing spirits. I believe Satan in these last days has opened up the trap doors of hell and has left loose legions of seducing, demonic, dark, vile, spirits upon the church upon the true body of Christ the Bible said that day will happen it's here boy I should preach this on Sunday morning I might just do that <laughs> you know me by <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> hey, Carlos. <laughs> Look at this. The power from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits, small ass. That means demonic, evil, dark, seducing spirits. Now look what they bring. The spirits bring what? Doctrines of devils to tell you that you know homosexual is all right you know cross dressing is good your children your boy is not a boy your boy is a girl your girl's a boy or they don't know what they are welcome to life welcome to this last day You have parents who tell in the church, you're not a girl, you're a boy. And telling the boy, you're not a boy, you're a girl. And you're not a girl, you're a boy. And trusting them like opposite sex. These are the spirit upon the parents to bring about confusion. God is not the author of confusion. But a peace. And so doctrines of devil. Now the doctrine of devil is mixing Christianity with Muslim. Muslim worship the, the demon god of the, of the moon, the half moon. Research it, Google it. I challenge you, go do it. Have nothing to do with Christ. You got cults and false religion, but a lot of new, new age and a lot of new, the new age.
Worship the earth. Worship the moon. Worship the creature. Worship the animal. Worship, worship. Worship anything except Christ. That's where we're at. Doctrines of devils. Look at verse 2. And I, I, I got to hurry because I'm already got 10 after 9. Speaking lies. Remember? God, Jesus said, lie not one to another. And yet, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Now that you know what's coming out your mouth is a bald face, bald face lie, but you have no conscience to convict you that it is a lie. You speak it as if it is truth. Why can they do that? Because they're having their conscience, look at it, seared with a hot iron. Like you cook steak. You ever put raw steak on the hot grill? And after a while you flip it, what do you see? The mark of the grill on it? That's called seared steak. That's people's conscience. They don't feel. They have no feeling. They have no, they cannot feel the quickening, the prick of the Holy Ghost. It's like, it's like uh, anybody's ever stuck your finger with a pin or a needle? Come on, talk to me here. Well, the Holy Spirit is quick. You are quickened by the Spirit. In other words, He sticks you. You feel it. You feel what the Holy Spirit is doing. With the constant sin, you have no feeling. It's when a person like a person who has diabetes in the foot and they lost all feeling. You go to the doctor and they say, stretch out your foot. And he gets a real pin. And he pushes in your foot. You feel that? No. <laughs> Hello? You feel this? Stick? No. You're about to get your foot cut off. Because your foot is dying. You have no feeling. That sounds funny when I say it, but that's dead serious. Because if you have no feeling, that means there's no blood going to your foot. And if there's no blood going to your foot, and your foot begins to rot, that's called gangrene. And they have to cut it off before gangrene goes in your bloodstream and kill you. Boy, Pastor, you playing. Yep, I am. I don't sugarcoat anything. You know where I stand. Either you stand with God, stand with truth. If the church don't stand with truth and be plain with the word of God, who else will? I'm not here to impress you or to gain your love. All I want to gain is the love of Christ. The church people love you today and kick you in the rear end tomorrow. I lived that all 56 years. I've been there, done that. I'm still getting a kick. Welcome to Christians. Jesus got it. Am I better than him? Look what they did to him. All right, I'm going to hold it right now. I'm not even finished. But, but, but let, 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 let's, let's just finish scripture if we can. Having the conscience seared as with a hot iron. Verse 13, forbidding to marry. Isn't that what the Catholic Church does? They tell the priest you can't marry, but you can be homosexual. You can sodomite little boys. Well, you shouldn't say that. That's what they do. That's real. Destroying lives every day. Forbidding to marry. Commanded to abstain from meat. You know, you can't eat meat on Friday. You can eat fish. But you can't eat. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you. That, you know, we live in that now. You know. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. We operate by what? We believe and know the truth. The truth. I'm going to say that with me. We, the way we live, we believe and know the truth. 
you shall know the truth and the truth shall what make you free he whom the son has set free is free indeed stand fast in the liberty wherefore christ hath made you free and be not again entangled therein with the yoke of bondage and the yoke of sin stand with me i'm gonna give the lord a round of applause that's page one of a 10 page message I'm going to give you love the word. We're going to receive our offering and we're going to come down front and we're going to close. I want you to come down front as we receive our offering. I feel such liberty here. Liberty and freedom to speak the word. Truth. The truth. Come on now. The truth. Without hesitation. Without rest. Without reservation. Yes. 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 Father, bless the seed that we sow. We sow by faith. We sow with joy. We sow with thanksgiving. Father, bless it, break it, multiply it, and sow back into the lives of your children. I declare every need man, every bill paid. You're a God who's more than enough. Meet every need, Father. Bless your people. Prosper your people. I take authority as a servant of God and I bind the spirit of black want and poverty I release by faith the supernatural provision of God in every family here in the name of Jesus that they will see the hand of God the goodness of God the mercy and the grace and the love and the provision of God in their families in their lives Happens, let them recognize that it came from you. Your hand. We honor you. We lift you high. 